identification of unknown bacteria. For exercise number 46, you will need to make a set of known stock bacteria. These bacteria will be used as your positive and negative controls for the biochemical testing. Exercise 47 is the identification of unknown bacteria. You begin this process by, of course, selecting your unknown. The tube containing your unknown organisms should have two bacteria growing together. Once you've received your unknown organisms, be sure to label the tube with your name. You will want to keep this culture throughout the project. Step 1. Isolation of bacteria. You will be carrying out an isolation streak plate for your unknown organisms. Obtain two nutrient agar plates. For best results, we suggest that you run two isolation streak plates the first time you attempt isolation. You should label the plate with your name, the date, and the number of your unknown. Let's review the isolation streak plate technique. Aseptic technique is critical to success in identification of the unknown. Make sure that your loop is sterile and allow it to cool. Aseptically obtain the inoculum. Inoculate one-third of the plate. Flame your loop. After allowing the loop to cool, place the now sterile loop in the center of what you just inoculated. Drag over a small streak on the second third of the plate. Now, using the loop, drag across the second inoculum and make the third. This should separate the bacteria from each other enough so that separate colonies can grow. Shown here is a proper isolation streak plate. Notice that some of the bacteria are growing by themselves in single colonies. When trying to determine isolation, sometimes two bacteria will grow together and look very similar. You will want to look for differences in the growth. Those differences can be color, texture, and morphology of the colonies. Differences in pigmentation can also be helpful in determining which bacteria is which. Here, these two bacteria have different textures and morphologies. When determining isolation, it is helpful to circle the colony that you wish to isolate. Since two organisms are growing together on the plate, you will want to label them separately. We suggest labeling one of the organisms A and the other organism as B. You will use a sterile loop or needle, depending on the size of the colony, to scrape the colony off of the isolation plate and place it into a nutrient agar slant. You may want to ask your instructor to help you identify the two different organisms for isolation. Which of these two plates, A or B, has the best isolation streak plate technique? Step 2. The Gram Stain After isolation of your two bacteria into slants, you will now need to gram stain. Gram staining serves two purposes. The first is that you need to know the gram stain result of your bacteria in order to proceed with biochemical testing. The second purpose of gram staining is to ensure that the bacteria you placed on the slant are growing in pure culture. The unknown mixes are usually a gram negative and a gram positive put together. If both gram negative and gram positive organisms show up on your gram stain slide, you will know that your slant is not isolated. Step 3. Identification using biochemical testing. After isolation and gram staining, 
you are now ready to begin the biochemical testing phase of identification. Here is an example of identifying an unknown. After isolation and gram staining, you determined that you have a gram-negative rod. You then run the biochemical tests that are listed here. The results for those biochemical tests when compared to the known test results table on page 316 and 17 of your lab manual, the combination of results leads you to determine the organism is Salmonella typhimuria. Another example is with a gram-positive cocci. Here, two different biochemical tests were run, and the combination of those test results leads you to determine that the unknown organism is Staphylococcus aureus. This organism was easily identified with only two tests. Now it is your turn to try to identify the unknown organism. A gram-negative rod has been isolated, and the tests shown with their test results were run. Use the test results given and look them up on page 316 of your lab manual to determine which organism would give this combination of results. Now let's try to identify a gram-positive rod. A triple sugar iron agar and a litmus milk were run for the identification of this organism. Can you determine what it is? Let's review the three basic steps for the identification of an unknown organism. Step one is isolation. Step two is gram staining. And step three is running a series of biochemical tests. Be sure to check with your instructor for any specific requirements he or she may have in your laboratory. The process shown here for the identification of unknown bacteria is carried out by microbiologists around the world every day. This is done in order to discover and understand more about the bacteria around us. We hope you find this unknown project a fun and exciting way to practice some of the techniques that you have learned. We also hope you learn a little bit about micro along the way. Enjoy the project and have fun.